On top of that, starting from 2017, the club has received donations from benefactors and the foundation. Overall, the club has received £30 million in donations, averaging £6 million annually in recent years. It's always been about the foot soldiers, um, you know, your average fan. We've always said it's by the fans for the fans. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we're jetting off to Edinburgh to unravel the financial story of Hearts. In 2014, Hearts hit rock bottom, going into administration and suffering relegation after 31 years in the Premiership. The Jambos quickly bounced back and secured a remarkable third place finish upon their return. Hearts' top flight streak ended in 2020 with another relegation to the Championship. The yo-yo effect continued as Hearts swiftly returned the next year, securing two top half finishes to finish the decade. On the sidelines, Tynecastle saw a constant rotation of managers in the dugout. Locke, Nielsen, daily caretaker. Cathro, daily caretaker. Levine, Stendhal, Nielsen, again, Naismith. Now let's delve behind the scenes. What's been unfolding off the pitch? What this has done is given me a taste of it, and I know I'm ready. Despite the 2014 setback, revenues grew over the next five years in the Premiership. Following the 2021 Championship stint, revenue peaked at 21 million in 2023. What contributed to this? Let's analyse the revenue sources. First, gate receipts have seen consistent growth, reaching a high of 6 million in 2023. Gate receipts accounted for 30% of revenue, whereas a decade ago, match day attendance comprised nearly double that percentage. Sponsorship, advertising and surprisingly broadcasting revenues contribute a very small fraction, much less than what English clubs earn. In contrast, commercial revenues have thrived, with Hearts generating over 5 million in 2023. European football, particularly the Europa Conference League, proved lucrative, bringing in 7 million in 2023. This becomes even more significant considering the limited broadcasting revenue in Scottish football. It's going to be a raucous night in Riga, that's for sure. By league position, revenue tends to cluster with higher earnings in the top half of the Premiership and lower revenues during relegation and promotion battles. On average, Scottish Premiership revenue is just under double that of the Championship, highlighting the disparity compared to the financial rewards of promotion to the English top flight. Now let's explore profits. Immediately, the substantial profit in 2014 stands out. We'll investigate that one further. Except for 2015, Hearts have consistently generated profits every season. And, by league position, profits have remained relatively consistent. The outlier in 2014 resulted in an average profit of £5 million for Hearts in the Premiership. So how did this occur? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button, and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Staff costs increased during the middle period to just under £9 million. However, following relegation in 2021, there was a brief reduction before experiencing significant growth, reaching £15 million in 2023. Apart from the impact of COVID in 2021, parts have consistently kept the wage bill below 80% of revenue in all seasons. What was the cost of points on the pitch for Hearts in terms of wages? Hearts achieved points at an average cost of £200,000, with the cost dropping to under £100,000 during one third place finish. Following staff costs, Hearts appear to be in a better position compared to many other teams we've examined. Now, let's discuss operating costs. We see that significant £25 million profit here. Subsequently, costs remained steady between 2 to £4 million and to another profit in 2021. What's the situation during these years? In 2013, administration loomed over Hearts. Ant Budge, with the foundation of Hearts, acquired the club and by the end of 2014 had resolved the administration. In 2021, Budge would sign over her shares to the foundation, meaning Hearts would become the largest fan-owned club in the UK. But back in 2014, amid intricate negotiations, they reached a creditors' voluntary arrangement, essentially striking a deal to avoid a £27 million payout to creditors, thus ensuring the club's stable future. On top of that, Starting from 2017, the club has received donations from benefactors and the foundation. 
Overall, the club has received £30 million in donations, averaging £6 million annually in recent years. It's always been about the foot soldiers, um, you know, your average fan. We've always said it's by the fans, for the fans. So, at an EBITDA level, hearts are in the black 9 out of 10 years. Now, turning our attention to stadium facilities, let's factor in these before delving into our final cost category, transfer fees. Hearts transfer fees are notably smaller compared to other clubs we looked at. No year recorded a net profit or cost exceeding 1 million. Profits in 2016 and 2021 stem from the sales of Osman So and Aaron Hickey, respectively. In 2023, the purse strings loosened with the signings of Lawrence Shankland and Orestes Kiyomotsoglu. Apologies for any mispronunciation. Overall, after the 2014 takeover, the profit trend has remained relatively consistent. However, if we exclude the nations received in the 2014 write-off by the club, we observe costs beginning to surpass revenues. On average, the profit margins have been robust, 38% in the Premiership. However, exclude that write-off and donations, it dwindles to a 12% operating loss in top line. Therefore, a crucial question arises. Will the club's benefactors sustain their support in the long term if costs escalate? Obviously, well, I can stand here talk about it and say we'll do this, this and this, but at the end of the day, it's all nonsense, you know. Let's see if the cash matches up with the profit narrative we've just discussed. As always, we're examining the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, derived from EBITDA line items by excluding donations, reflects the narrative we've just seen. Generally, cash flowed into Tyne Castle more often than not, but since the pandemic, it's been flowing out. Over the decade, a net £10 million has left Hearts coffers. Now let's revisit transfers. It's a different scenario compared to English teams. Overall, Hearts have broken even, generating £500,000. However, this won't adequately offset those operational cash flows. When we aggregate these amounts, £9 million has left Tyne Castle over the past decade. So who's financing these costs? Examining both donations and other funding, we observe a steady increase. Over the past decade, £30 million has been contributed through donations, with an additional £8 million from sources like the Foundation. Will Hearts continue to progress and flourish under their Foundation model? Only time will tell. Until next time.